Starring Tommy Rettig as Jeff Miller. Jan Clayton as his mother, Ellen. George Cleveland as Gramps. And, of course, Lassie. Well, excuse me. I gotta get after them gophers in the truck garden. They're eating us out of house and home. Maybe Jeff could give you a hand. Oh, sure, if you really need me. Well, now, don't look so down the mouth. I know today is Saturday and you've got things to do. Jeff! It's Steve! <laughs> Why don't he fly through the barn? He's buzzing us. He's going over to the Brockways to dust their cabbage field. Porky and me are going to watch him. Well, he won't be dusting much around here after today. Why not? Because I've called a grains meeting for this afternoon. We don't want nobody trying out their newfangled ideas around here. But, Gramps, it's not newfangled. It's good for the crops, and it's been used before. Steve's a licensed pilot, and he's got a permit to crop dust. He showed Mr. Brockway how he could save $50 by letting him dust the cabbages. Matt's a fool. No, he's not. Golly, Gramps, it took me and Porky almost an hour to talk his pop into this. So please don't spoil things now. You don't know it, but Steve flew 50 combat missions in jets. And then he went to school to learn how to crop dust. Oh, he's a swell guy, Gramps. Honest he is. Well, he ain't gonna be dusting around here after the day. <laughs> you going someplace? Over to Porky's. You haven't seen Laddie, have you? He was out here before. Got into the pig wallow yesterday and I wanted to give him a bath. I guess he knew that. Bye. Bye, dear. Hi, Steve. Hi. Well, how are you, girl? Wonder where you two were. Thought I saw Lassie over here a little while ago. She's been with me. I'll bet it was Laddie. That's her pup. <laughs> Maybe. Can't tell from up there. He erased the shadow of my plane for a while. You haven't finished already. No, I'm just refueling. Uh... Hey, where's he? <laughs> you mean Ace Brockway? Boy, this is the greatest! Is it okay if I take a look? Sure. Just don't touch any of the controls. Why, you two? Well, go ahead, take a look. Look, Jeff, that's the starter, and here's the throttle, and here's the stick, and there's the rudder pedal, and the dust release. How do you know? Well, he told me. That's what I thought. Boy, it must be great zooming along ten feet from the ground. I sure wish I could go on a dusting ride. Well, why not, Jeff? Well, Mom might let me, but Gramps... Gramps... You know, fellas, it was real good this morning dusting that field. You get the feeling that your flying is really helping somebody, really doing a job. The war, well, that was one of those things that has to be done, but this... I like it. You know, Porky... I figure when I finish dusting your pup's cabbages and the others see how cheap and effective it is, why... Steve, my Gramps... Hey, don't tell me you got another job for me already. Well, no. He's calling the meeting of the Grange, so they won't give you any more jobs. Cheapers! But why? I'll bet it's because his Gramps thinks that you're going to poison everyone. So I thought maybe if... You came to talk to him now, before the meeting. I'd like to, Jeff. I'd like to very much. Gramps doesn't change his mind easy. He sure doesn't. My pop says he's the stubbornest though.
I want you to meet my friend, Steve Talbot. Steve, this is my Gramps. Pleased to know you, Mr. Miller. Howdy. You're wasting your time, young man, if you come to talk about crop dusting to me. I told him about the meeting. I'm sure we can clear up this misunderstanding, Mr. Miller, if you'll just... Listen. I don't know anything about any misunderstanding. Anything that hurts farmers is Grange business. I didn't come to Calverton to hurt anyone, sir. I came to help. Well, there ain't nothing personal, mind that. But you're going to ask that meeting this afternoon to outlaw my plane. But well, I've heard tell what could happen. Well, Gramps, that's just talk. Steve uses new things. Yeah, when he was at ag school, he... All right, all right. We're no need to go into that rigmarole. Be reasonable, Mr. Miller. Have you heard of a single instance where a person or an animal has been harmed by my dusting? No, but you ain't been here long. Please, sir. And I... we ain't waiting to hear. You sow poison in the sky and you're going to reap trouble. Well, I got work to do. Good day, Mr. Talbot. Gosh, I'm sorry, Steve. Let go stubble. Thanks, fellas. He's just doing what he thinks is right. Maybe if you went to the Grange meeting. No use, Jeff. You just can't fight City Hall. <laughs> Said. Jeff, you don't think I had it? Yes, Jenny, that's right. Yes, I, I want to talk to Dr. Drover, the Grange vet in Creston. All right, Jenny. What a time for Doc Weaver to be out of town. Gosh, he's awful quiet. Gramps, do you think that soapy water we gave him did any good? I'm afraid he's had the poison too long. Doing everything we can, girl. Honest. Oh, hello, Dr. Drover. Uh, this is George Miller's daughter in Calverton. Yes. Dr. Our collie pup has been poisoned. Yes, he's terribly ill. No, we, we tried that. It doesn't seem to help. Well, we... We don't know. No. Well, I guess that would be important. Oh, just a minute, Doctor. Will you hang on a minute, please? Just a minute. He can't tell us an antidote without knowing what kind of poison it was. You got any notion what that duster was using? No, but he's still waiting outside. Well, we'd better ask him. Steve? Could you come in a minute, please? Pup better? He's not even crying now. Vet says he can't help unless he knows what poison you were dusting. There was nothing in the dust to make that pup sick. Mr. Talbot, this can mean the difference between saving Laddie and losing him. Please, Steve, please tell us the truth. I have told you the truth, Jeff. I'm afraid we just don't know, Doctor. Oh, 
Not before then. Yes, I see. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Won't he come, Mom? Well, he just can't leave his office before evening, sweetheart. We'll have to drive Laddie to Creston. Oh, he's breathing awful hard. But that'll take almost an hour and a half. Laddie will be dead by then. It's a chance, Jeff. But we've got to do it. Unless you change your mind, Talbot. Any vet will tell you pyrethrum is harmless to animals. You better get moving. Laddie won't make it, Willie Gramps. Son of Lassie's wouldn't give up that easily. Perhaps with luck, but it's too far. I know it is. Mr. Miller, I can fly Laddie to Creston, have him there in half an hour. My plane's all fueled. We'll manage. Look, sir, why let something between us kill that pup and hurt Jeff? You know time's against you. I can save you at least an hour, maybe more. Please, Gramps, can't we try? If it means a better chance for Laddie, Dad. Maybe his life. Well, all right. I'll go along, Steve. Me too. Not in that airplane. Oh, but Mom... I'll take good care of him, Jeff. Besides, Lassie needs you here. It's okay, girl. Steve wants to help Laddie. She doesn't understand. You hold it, Jeff. I'll carry the pup out. We'll come back, girl. Honest. Better go home, I guess. I sure hope that. All right, Dan. Yes, I'll tell him. What? Oh, fine. All right, thank you, Dan. Goodbye. Jeff, dear, sitting here and brooding isn't going to help Laddie. Why hasn't he called, Mom? I don't know, dear. We promised Gramps he would, didn't he? How about a nice peanut butter and jelly sandwich? You didn't touch your lunch. Why'd he promise if he didn't mean it? Why did he have to lie about that, too? Oh, Dan Redford just called, honey, and I... Uh, he changed his mind about the meeting. He is coming. Oh, oh and Mr. Adams called earlier. He'll be a few minutes late. Do you think you can crowd them all into the parlor? Well, comfort ain't needful. What we got to do won't take long. Why don't you set out the bridge chairs? Good idea. Gramps doesn't care about Laddie, does he? Yeah. All he cares about is that Grange meeting. Oh, Jeff, now you know that isn't true. Of course he cares. We all care. We're just trying not to give up hope. You mustn't either. Steve's been gone almost two hours, and he hasn't called. That must mean that Laddie... Sixteen chairs, all told. That ought to be enough. I'm making two pots of coffee, and I have some cookies. Oh, no sense in fussing. This ain't no social gathering. You better go out and have a talk with Jeff. He seems to think that you don't care about Laddie. Where'd he get that crazy idea? Shh, no. He's sitting out on the bench. Go and try to cheer him up. He's oh, way down oh. in the dumps.
That his airplane? You want to go out and meet him? I'll drive you out in the pickup. It's no use. I just want to be here when he comes, so I can tell him what I think. I tried several times to call, but I couldn't it see... It doesn't him. matter. We sort of knew all along that Vladdy... I'll take over. Vladdy's <laughs> oh. alive! <laughs> Sounds like it, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's head over to your son's mill in a couple of days. <laughs> The line was busy every time I called, so I figured it was best just to come on back. Well, thanks a lot, Steve. <laughs> I'll be taking off in a few minutes, but just for the record, Mr. Miller, it was strychnine that poisoned Laddie. Where'd he get strychnine? I don't know, Jeff, but Dr. Drover made a very careful analysis. That's what took so long. But you don't use strychnine in your dust. Of course not. Gramsci, do you hear that? Where'd he go? Doesn't matter, Jeff. The important thing is that Laddie's all right. But I gotta find him. He's gotta tell everyone from the Grange that it wasn't your dusting that poisoned Laddie. Gramps! Gramps! That's a wonderful boy you've got there, Mrs. Miller. Oh, thank you. It was strychnine. Yes, I know. But you've got to tell everybody coming to the meeting. Right, honey. After all, it was hidden. Steve, run right away. We gotta catch him. Pick us behind the barn. Helen, call everybody and tell them Gray's beaten his castle. You were an awfully sick puppy. But maybe some good will come of it. It's charged. I do now? Nothing. You didn't do anything. That's why you don't have to go. No, I think I better finish Mr. Brockway's farm and then move on. Why? Why, Steve? Now, hold on a minute. I don't often backtrack, but I got it. It was me that poisoned the dog. Gramps put some gopher poison in the garden, but he didn't bury it deep enough, and Laddie dug it up. Yeah, strychnine. I should have known. So you see, Steve, everything's okay. You don't have to leave. I don't think so, Jeff. It's so hard to change people. Are you trying to say I'm an old dog that can't learn new tricks? Now, I was wrong, and I'm admitting it. Now, you get back there in that airplane and go and dust Matt Brockway's cabbages, then come back and dust my potatoes. 
Really mean that, Mr. Miller? I never said anything in my life that I, I didn't mean. Now get going. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> see how cheap and effective it is, why... Steve, my Gramps... Hey, don't tell me you got another job for me already. Well, no. He's calling the meeting of the Grange, so they won't give you any more jobs. Cheapers! But why? I'll bet it's because his Gramps thinks that you're gonna poison everyone. So I thought maybe if you came to talk to him now, before the meeting... I'd like to, Jeff. I liked it very much. Gramps doesn't change his mind easy. He sure doesn't. My pop says he's the stubbornest dog. Pleased to know you, Mr. Miller. Howdy. You're wasting your time, young man, if you come to talk about crop dusting to me. I told him about the meeting. I'm sure we can clear up this misunderstanding, Mr. Miller, if you'll just... Listen. I don't know anything about any misunderstanding. Anything that hurts farmers is Grange business. I didn't come to Calverton to hurt anyone, sir. I came to help. Well, there ain't nothing personal, mind that. But you're going to ask that meeting this afternoon to outlaw my plane. But I've heard tell what could happen. Well, Gramps, that's just talk. Steve uses new things. Yeah, when he goes to dad's school, he... All right, all right. We're no need to go into that rigmarole. Be reasonable, Mr. Miller. Have you heard of us? You going someplace? Over to Porky's. You haven't seen Laddie, have you? He was out here before. Got into the pig wallow yesterday, and I wanted to give him a bath. <laughs> I guess he knew that. Bye. Bye, dear. Hi. Well, how are you, girl? I wonder where you two were. Thought I saw Lassie over here a little while ago. She's been with me. I'll bet it was Laddie. That's her pup. <laughs> Maybe. Can't tell from up there. He raced the shadow of my plane for a while. You haven't finished already. No, I'm just refueling. Uh, hey, where's he? <laughs> you mean Ace Brockway? Boy, this is the greatest! Is it okay if I take a look? Sure. Just don't touch any of the controls. <laughs> Why, you two? Well, go ahead. Take a look. <laughs> look, Jeff. That's the starter. And here's the throttle. And here's the stick. And there's the rudder pedal. And the dust release. How do you know? Well... He told me. That's what I thought. 
boy. It must be great zooming along ten feet from the ground. I sure wish I could go on a dusting ride. Well, why not, Jeff? Well, Mom might let me, but Gramps... Gramps. You know, fellas, it was real good this morning dusting that field. You get the feeling that your flying is really helping somebody, really doing a job. The war, well, that was one of those things that has to be done, but this, I like it. You know, Porky, I figure when I finish dusting your pop's single instance where a person or an animal has been harmed by my dusting. No, but you ain't been here long. Please, sir. And I... we ain't waiting to hear. You're so poison in the sky and you're going to reap trouble. Well, I got work to do. Good day, Mr. Talbot. Gosh, I'm sorry, Steve. Let go of Stubble. Thanks, fellas. He's just doing what he thinks is right. Maybe if you went to the Grange meeting. No use, Jeff. You just can't fight City Hall. What's the matter, girl? What's the matter? What is it? I don't know. Something happened to him. Rams! Rams! Gee, he's awful sick. Right here. What's the fuss? He's sick, awful sick. He acts like he feels terrible, Gramps. Can you tell what's hurting him? No doubt of it. Dog's been poisoned. Poison? Oh, wait. Single instance, you said. Jeff. You don't think I had it. Tommy Rettig as Jeff Miller. Jan Clayton as his mother, Ellen. George Cleveland as Gramps. And, of course, Lassie. Well, excuse me. I got to get after them gophers in the truck garden. They're eating us out of house and home. Maybe Jeff could give you a hand. Oh, sure, if you really need me. Well, now, don't look so down the mouth. I know today is Saturday and you've got things to do. Jeff! It's Steve! Why don't he fly through the barn? He's buzzing us. He's going over to the Brockways to dust their cabbage field. Porky and me are going to watch him. Well, he won't be dusting much around here after today. Why not? Because I've called a Grange meeting for this afternoon. We don't want nobody trying out their newfangled ideas around here. But, Gramps, it's not newfangled. It's good for the crops, and it's been used before. Steve's a licensed pilot, and he's got a permit to crop dust. We showed Mr. Brockway how he could save $50 by letting him dust the cabbages. Matt's a fool. No, he's not. Golly, Gramps, it took me and Porky almost an hour to talk his pop into this. So please don't spoil things now. You don't know it, but Steve flew 50 combat missions in jets. And then he went to school to learn how to crop dust. Oh, he's a swell guy, Gramps. Honest he is. Well, he ain't gonna be dusting around here after the day. <laughs> yes, Jenny. That's right. Yes. I want to talk to Dr. Drover, the Grange vet in Creston. All right, dear. What a time for Doc Weaver to be out of town. 
gosh, he's awful quiet. Gramps, do you think that soapy water we gave him did any good? I'm afraid he's had the poison too long. <laughs> We're doing everything we can, girl. Honest. Oh, hello, Dr. Drover. Uh, this is George Miller's daughter in Calverton. Yes. Dr. Our collie pup has been poisoned. Yes, he's terribly ill. No, we, we tried that. It doesn't seem to help. Well, we, we don't know. No. Well, I, I guess that would be important. Oh, just a minute, Doctor. Will you hang on a minute, please? Just a minute. He can't tell us an antidote without knowing what kind of poison it was. You got any notion what that duster was using? No, but he's still waiting outside. Well, we'd better ask him. Steve? Could you come in a minute, please? Pop better? He's not even crying now. Vet says he can't help unless he knows what poison you were dust. There was nothing in the dust to make that pup sick. Mr. Talbot, this can mean the difference between saving Laddie and losing him. Please, Steve, please tell us the truth. I have told you the truth, Jeff. 